Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. We are talking about fountain pen friendly papers today. And um, in today's video, we're going to be covering some of the different factors to consider when you think about fountain pen friendly paper. And after doing some extensive testing of different inks on uh, some of our favorite papers in store, uh, we're going to recommend a few of our favorite fountain pen friendly papers for um, depending on what you're looking looking for in your paper. So the reason that I'm making this video is that, um, you know, I often get asked in store after helping a customer find their new fountain pen or maybe their first fountain pen. Um, they've done extensive testing with all the fountain pens in our store and using our pads of paper. And they often turn to me and then they just ask, okay, so do I need some new paper now? And the answer to that question is kind of yes. So if you really want to get the best writing experience, out of your new fountain pen, you'll want to find some fountain pen friendly paper to really enjoy your fountain pen to to the maximum. Um, so there's lots of different fountain pen friendly papers out there and we're gonna recommend a few of them, but I recommend that you try a lot and um, find what you love most because some of it is, you know, there's no gold standard of what makes a fountain pen friendly paper the best. It's a lot of it is personal preference and there's different factors that affect other things. So we'll talk about some of the different qualities that we look for in fountain pen friendly paper. And we'll start our discussion off with the seven different factors. There are seven. I think there are seven different factors um, to consider when you are looking for a paper that is friendly to your fountain pen. And I love that term because I love to think of the paper being friends with the fountain pen. <laughs> it's really cute. Um, so the first term that, the first thing that, that we look for when we're thinking about paper is no feathering. So feathering occurs when ink is absorbed too quickly by paper. And what happens is the line that you make with your fountain pen ink, it actually spreads because it absor it's absorbed so quickly by paper. The line gets a little bit fuzzy and the ink, the ink sort of feathers out along the fibers of the paper. So um, I'll show you what this means because it's a, I, it's a very visual thing that occurs and um, usually it happens in more textured papers, um, raw papers, like recycled papers that are very, um, that you can you can really touch and feel. I have a piece of paper here and it's not exactly like writing paper or anything like that. It's actually from this Classic-y memo pad of like receipt paper pads that we have by Classic-y. And you would get this more to like collage with, to do fun things and scrapbook with and things like that. So it's printed on on this very like kind of like construction paper type of paper. Um, and this, I just chose this because it really illustrates what textured paper will do to fountain pen ink um, because of how quickly the fountain pen ink will get absorbed by the paper. Okay, so here you can really see an example of that feathering because in these lines here, you can see a lot of that like fuzziness occurring or like the, like literally feathering. Um, the ink line is feathering out and just kind of widening. So what happens is the ink just gets like sucked up by the paper. The paper is not coated. It's very textured. It's like construction paper. It just gets absorbed way too quickly and it starts spreading out along those paper fibers. So that is what feathering looks like. And you can really see it like in this little cluster, you can really see it throughout. And I chose this ink Diamine Sweet Dreams because this was, according to many of our customers, um, a very feathery ink. So this is supposed to be like a prime example of feathering. So when we're looking for fountain pen friendly papers, we definitely don't want feathering. And that's the first factor to consider. And some of these different factors, um, you know, we, we don't want feathering. That's like a no-no in fountain pen friendly paper. But some of the factors of the seven that we'll be covering 
are kind of like on a sliding scale. So the more of one thing you get, the less of another thing. And then you, it's kind of like up to the person to decide whether they want more of one thing and less of another thing. But with feathering, you generally, people generally don't want feathering with their fountain pen friendly papers. Okay. So the next thing, the next factor to consider is bleed through and bleed through often accompanies feathering. So I'm going to use this same example here to show you all what bleed through means and bleed through is really just the um, ink seeping over to the opposite side of the paper and coming through to the back side. I'll show you all what that means by flipping this paper over. So you can see here on the back side, you can see this is not where I've written, but because this ink was so absorbent, because this ink was so feathery, the ink really bled through to the other side of the page. And really, you, if you were to write on this side of the page, it would just completely kind of bleed out, um, out of the line because this, this paper is now kind of just like oversaturated with ink already. So that is an example of bleed through, which you really often find at the same time with feathering. So more feathering equals more bleed through. And that's another no-no in the world of fountain pens. You know, you don't want your ink to bleed through to the other side of the page because you won't be able to write on the other side of the page. And you'll kind of feel like, what happens when you write when you're when when you write and you feel like your your ink is bleeding and feathering is you just it's just not a very good feeling because you feel like as you're writing the the ink is like expanding on the paper um and your letters are blending together so it, it when, when that happens personally, I just feel like panicked when that happens because you feel like your legibility of what you've written is really decreasing um, and it gets worse like as the seconds go by. <laughs> so for me, it's like, oh no, <laughs> and I start, start panicking. Um, okay, so that is bleed through and feathering. That brings us to number three and number three is show through slash ghosting. So um, ghosting is another thing you'll hear about when people talk about fountain pen friendly papers and ghosting is one of those things that um, is more of a personal preference. So um, some people are okay with ghosting and some people are really don't like ghosting. Um, but inherently ghosting is not bad. It doesn't mean that the paper is bad. Like or it doesn't mean that the paper is bad for fountain pens like feathering and bleed through. So what ghosting is, is really just, um, and this happens with thinner papers usually, it's really just being able to see what you've written, the shadow of what you've written um, on the opposite side of the page, on the back side. So I have an example here. This is um, a little example that I prepared on Tomoe River, it's Sons and Tomoe River uh, 52 GSM. And this is a very thin paper. So um, if you flip it over, you can pretty much see a lot of what you've written from the other side. You can make out almost completely the letters that you've written because you can see the shadow, but ghosting is different from bleed through because bleed through is really, you can see the ink on the opposite side of the page. This is really just the shadow. So you can see how those two are different. This is, this is bleed through and this is ghosting or show through. And as I was saying before, um, people are kind of divided or people have different opinions on show through. So you can be completely okay with show through and you'll even, a lot of people will still continue to write on the opposite side of the page, even when you can see the shadow of what you've written on that, that side of the page. Um, and some people just prefer not to see what they've written on the opposite side of the page. And it's like a personal thing. So you can decide whether that's something you're okay with or whether you would rather not have that. All right. Number four is smoothness. So, um, smoothness is another one of those things that, um, is, kind of on a sliding scale 
And as you get more smooth paper, you usually find coated papers, which will affect things like the dry time and it will affect things like feathering actually. But so smoothness is something that it's not, it's not a definite like no or yes, but it can contribute to your writing experience when you're writing on a fountain pen, when you're writing with a fountain pen. So here to demonstrate smoothness, I have, um, a couple of notebooks in front of me. I have the Apica Premium CD notebook and I have the MD notebook here. So these two notebooks are like on pretty opposite sides of the smoothness scale. We have the Apica Premium, which is very, very smooth paper. And we have the MD paper, which is a little bit rougher. Um, some people would call it toothy because it's a little bit more textured, but they're both considered fountain pen friendly. And um, to demonstrate the difference in smoothness, I'm gonna actually do a little writing sample and you'll probably be able to hear the difference between the really smooth paper and the, the rougher paper, the MD paper. So here's the Apica paper. And here's the MD paper. Back to the Apica. and back to the MD. Okay, Apica and MD. Okay, so because those papers, hopefully you were able to hear, but um, because those papers are so different in the, the smoothness, um, the Apica is really, really smooth to write on. It is like a very pleasant, smooth writing experience. And then the MD paper, you feel like you have a little bit more like something to hold on to when you're writing with it. And it does produce that audible noise of writing, which some people really, really love. You know, they want to feel like they're writing on paper when you're writing with a fountain pen and you want to kind of feel like you are feeling what you're writing um, as opposed to the Apica paper, you kind of feel it less because it's so smooth. And some people would argue that a smooth paper kind of, you almost like, it's almost slippery, like you almost lose your grip on the paper and you might write sloppier on the really smooth paper rather than the more textured paper. So smoothness is another factor, to, uh, smoothness is another factor to consider when you're looking at fountain pen friendly papers. So next thing to consider when you're thinking about papers and fountain pen friendly papers, number five is the dry time. So dry time has everything to do with smoothness. Usually smoothness is um, coated paper and um, the more coated a paper is, the longer it will take to dry, which can be a bad thing if you're the type of person who wants to write what you want to write and close your book and get ready to go. Um, so, or if you're somebody who already struggles with a lot of smearing, if you're a lefty, um, a, a paper with a longer dry time might really, really bug you. And that would be a paper that is really, really smooth, like the Apica Premium that we just showed. So to demonstrate the different dry times of paper, I've prepared some different papers here in front of me and we'll just be writing the same sentence on all of these different papers and running my finger across the ink just to see just to see visually um, the differences in dry time between the different papers uh, using the same using the same medium nib fountain pen. So the first paper here that I'm writing on is uh, that really textured construction paper where we had a lot of bleed through and a lot of feathering. And because this one is so textured and it's not coated at all, you'll see that the dry time here is practically nothing. There's gonna be no smearing because the paper is so absorbent. So I just ran my finger across after finishing the sentence and the, the ink is completely dry already because of how absorbent this paper is. 
Next up, we're testing on Sanzen Tomoe River 52 GSM, which is known to be one of the smoother papers, so we're anticipating a bit of a longer dry time here. So you can see the immediate difference between a non-coated paper such as this one and a coated paper such as this one. Um, this one smeared a lot. Even when I was finished with the sentence here, the T on the first letter that I wrote still smeared. Um, the last paper I'm going to test is MD paper, which is one of those more, more, more textured papers. It's a little bit less smooth than the Tomoe River, and it's less smooth than the Apica Premium that we were looking at before. And we are, I'm going to expect that there's going to be um, some smearing here because it's still a fountain pen, um, but less smearing. So you can see there's like kind of three levels of smearing here. Um, we have, I guess this would be an order. MD, Tomoe, and Textured. So you can see here, there are three different levels of smearing here for the same exact sentence written by the same exact Coeco Sport medium nib fountain pen. Um, we wrote the same sentence and there was no smearing on this very textured paper. There was some smearing on the MD paper um, and then there was a lot of smearing on the very smooth coated Tomoe River paper. So yeah, that's, that's a look at dry times and I hope now you understand that the smoother a paper is, the longer the ink dry time is. So if you want a very um, low dry time paper, you're most likely going to be looking for a paper that is less smooth to write on with your fountain pen. We talked about how smoothness and dry time is directly correlated with one another. And another thing that these things are associated with or affect is feathering actually. So the more, the quicker the ink is absorbed by a non-coated paper, the more feathering is going to occur. And the longer an ink takes to dry, um, and the slower it gets absorbed by that paper, the less feathering will occur. So that's something else to consider as well. So now we're going to talk about number six and number seven of the factors to consider when you're when you're looking at fountain pen friendly paper. Number six is paper color. So we've looked at a few different papers here today and here they are. And um, you know, you think of paper as white, but some companies like MD make this cream colored paper. And that's one of those personal preference things. So some people really prefer to write on bright white paper. They feel like they'll be able to see their inks in their true beauty on, on the bright white paper. And some people prefer like more of a mild color, more of a cream color, in which case you would go for a company like MD or Life often makes their papers in a cream colored paper. And that's just, that's just one of those things to consider, you know, and think about what you personally like to write on. So that's paper color. That was a short one and an easy one. And then the last thing, the last factor, number seven that we're going to talk about is one that I, I like to think of as kind of newer um, and it's ink friendliness. I haven't heard anyone use this term before. I've coined it myself, um, uh, unless somebody has used this term before, but um, ink friendliness is the ability of a paper to show off a beautiful ink. And um, you know, in the last three to five years, um, I we've seen just an explosion of different different inks and a lot of these inks that companies are coming out with just have these extraordinary qualities to shade and to sheen and to shimmer and these qualities are uh, really really beautiful qualities in ink that are drawn out 
by certain types of paper. So um, some papers will really, really exaggerate these qualities in ink, and some papers kind of will flatten and dull out these qualities in ink. So I think this is the seventh factor to consider when you're looking at fountain pen friendly papers. If you love those kinds of inks that will look, you know, very special or have like shading properties or sheening properties um, on on some papers. So let's look at some examples of how um, one very special ink appears differently on different types of paper. So I've prepared some writing samples of inks and we're gonna look at this one down here. This is the Sailor Yurameku Seki. And the pen that I've written with is a Pilot Custom 743 in a coarse nib. And this is a very broad nib, so you can see the line that we've made with this ink is very, very thick. So that's kind of what you want when you are trying to draw out those beautiful characteristics in ink. The ink that I've chosen is the Sailor Yurameku uh, Seki, and this is a highly shading ink. So you can see here, for example, this is this is Sanzen Tomoe River paper, which is one of those papers that's known to bring out those really beautiful qualities of ink. And so shading looks like this. It's the ability of some inks to um, appear to be multiple colors when they dry depending on where the ink sits and how long it takes to dry on the paper. So this ink is really beautiful. It's like a grayish purple, um, blue in some areas, green in some areas kind of ink. And this paper, the Sanzen, really brings it out. And the one that I'm gonna compare it to is actually a paper like this, which I got out of just like a regular notebook from Staples. And hopefully you can see here in a side-by-side -side that the left paper here, like the Staples paper, really flattens out this color of Sailor Yurameku Seki, and it just appears gray here, whereas on the Tomoe River paper, you get a lot more of this dynamic color-changing quality in the ink. So that is an example of ink-friendly paper versus non-ink-friendly paper. Okay, so that's ink friendliness. And now we've talked about the seven different factors that affect how fountain pen friendly a paper is. So how, how, like, how nice a paper is to your fountain pen. And hopefully, um, you know, with this knowledge, you can now go on and try all <laughs> not all. You can hopefully now with this knowledge, you can now go and try out a bunch of different fountain pen friendly papers that are available and figure out the winning formula for yourself of what you like most. In case you need some recommendations, I have done some testing with a few of our favorite brands. I have some notebooks that I've tested. Um, I tested Loistrom, I tested Life, I tested Tomoy River, I tested this Staples notebook, I tested um, Apica Premium, tested uh, MD Paper, tested Stology, tested um, a lot of the different papers that we carry here at Yosaka Stationery. And I tested with these inks, so we talked about the Sailor Yurameku Seki already that we tested with, which is a highly shading ink, and also just a very, very standard Pilot Namiki Black, which is just a very good, well-behaved ink that just doesn't give you a lot of trouble in general. And then I tested with this very interesting ink here. This is Diamine Sweet Dreams, and this ink is from the Ink Vent, from the 2023 Ink Vent. I chose this one because a lot of you wrote me and said that this ink was very feathery in your experience. So um, I wanted to put it to the test in a medium nib fountain pen on some of these papers and see which paper held up best to, to these inks. The pens that I inked up with are here. I have the black one that the Me Koweko medium nib that I inked with the Namiki black. We have the other, another Koweko medium nib that was inked up with the Diamine Sweet Dreams. And the Custom 743, I inked up with the Seki. So those are the uh, pen and ink combinations that we used.
Okay, and here are my results from my testing. So I have winners in different categories and then I have overall winners. So the winner for low dry time paper would be MD paper. So that was this one that we tried earlier. And you can see this is MD paper. And um, we did the testing earlier of how quickly some of the papers took to dry. And MD, because it isn't coated, because it's not super, super smooth, it just dried the quickest out of all the other papers. So this is the winner for low dry time, and it also held really well to all of these inks, and at the same time showed the shading, the shading quality really well. It didn't feather on this really, really feathery ink. And of course, as expected, the Namiki Black, which is just a very well-behaved ink, um, did, did beautifully with it. So MD is the winner for low dry time, if that's very, very important to you. The next test for the next winners um, are for smoothness. And for smoothness, the winners would be Apica and Life. So these two papers, the Life and the Apica, are both very like coated, very smooth papers that are really pleasant to write on if you like a smooth, smooth paper. But of course, keep in mind that with smooth paper, you have longer dry times um, and you'll have less feathering as well because the ink takes longer to absorb into the paper. So if you like smoothness, if smoothness is important to you, then Life and Apica Premium are the way to go. The next category is for ink friendliness. The winner for ink friendliness is actually going to be uh, Tomoe River. This is the example that we showed before of the ink friendly paper. Um, and you can see here, it really brings out the shading qualities of this ink, the Sailor Yurameku Seki. You can really see those multiple colors showing up in certain strokes, like in this S, the loop of this S, that is wild. There's like four colors showing up in the loop of that S. And just, just in the word Seki here, there's, there's a dark purple, there's a gray, there's like a little bit of a greenish hue in there. This paper really brings out those qualities and in inks very well. So I put this as the winner in ink friendliness. Next up, the category that we're gonna talk about is low show through slash ghosting. So if you're someone who does not like ghosting and does not like show through, which as we were saying before, it's, it's a personal preference. Some people are okay with it and some people don't like it. If you are not okay with it, the, the winner for all our papers is Apica Premium. You can see here, this is Apica Premium. And if you flip these over to the other side, you really can't see much of what you've written at all on the other side. So that's a winner. And if you, and just as an example, the Tomoe River, you can really see what you've written on the other side. So here you can't see, and here you can. So low, ghost, low ghosting and high ghosting. If you're somebody who doesn't like to see your writing on the other side, then the Apica Premium Paper is the one for you. Then I have some overall winners, and the overall winners are the, the papers that held inks really well, no feathering generally, that still show inks off very well, so they were still ink friendly as well as fountain pen friendly. They had pretty good dry time, so low dry time, you don't have to wait too long. Still relatively smooth, and just overall a really good, a really good fountain pen friendly paper. And the winners in that category are MD. You can see here, MD is a great, it's a cream, it's one of those cream colored papers and it dried pretty quickly, but the ink did not feather. And even on a very beautiful, uh, very beautiful ink like this Sailor Yurameku Seki, the ink did some beautiful things, even though it was dry pretty quickly. That's pretty cool that MD does that because we know that the quicker an ink is absorbed into paper, usually the less of these qualities, um, these qualities are usually more muted. But here, you can see that these qualities still really, really come through on the MD paper, even though it dries really quickly. So MD paper is my overall winner for fountain pen friendly paper. All right, so 
I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed learning about the seven different things that I consider when I'm looking at fountain pen friendly paper. And I hope you enjoyed some of the different recommendations. Hopefully this gives you a jumping off point if you're just getting into fountain pens on where to look for paper. There are so many different fountain pen friendly papers out there and now that you know like the seven factors to consider, hopefully you can like decide for yourself what works best for you because there's different diff different winning combinations for different people. But let me know if I missed anything, if you consider, if there's like one more thing that you consider when you're looking for fountain pen friendly paper that I totally missed, let me know. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something about fountain pen friendly papers and uh, maybe you'll try our overall winner, the MD paper. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video, guys. Bye.